Hi everyone, I'm Mike. I'm an artist based in the UK and I sell my work, both originals and prints, all over the world. Every Sunday I post a video. This is either a painting tutorial, a real-time demo or a plein air adventure. I enjoy painting a range of subjects including animals, landscapes, people including portraits and the occasional still life. I also enjoy using quite a wide range of media including conventional acrylic, interactive acrylic, watercolour, ink tents, and even marker pens, and sometimes I just combine all of these together. And having done the feet and legs, I'm actually going to continue with a similar technique um, up here, just to make this beak stand out a little bit. Now, you know, many of these outlines that I'm putting down now and, and put down on the feet and legs, I may partially hide. But at the same time, I think um, the addition of these little bits is hopefully just going to help help the painting on the whole. Um, and I can actually use, even though it's the you know technically the wrong colour, um, I can actually use if I can just get my reference a little bit closer to me, I can begin to place the eye using this dark blue as well. I mean, I guess I could say that, you know, over all the years I've been painting, certainly for the last, I don't know, 23 years or so, if there's a single unifying theme in terms of technique, um, I would say it's that I replace black with blue, um, you know, across all of the different subjects and styles I've painted in. That's the most common commonly applied technique across all of them. It, you know, it's, it isn't always the case, but um, it's probably the thing I've done the most. So that eye isn't quite right. Um, can I lift off that bit of blue? I can lift off most of it with a damp finger. Um, it's just, so it's, it's certainly not correct, but it's placed an eye on the head. And obviously I'll come back and, and refine that further in just a little bit. Now at the top of this leg we've got some very pale um, white feathers. So I'm just coming in initially with a pale blue and tinting white mix. And I'm going to continue that, sw switch back to my half inch flat brush. I'm going to continue that along the top of that leg. I'll put a little bit of that colour here a little bit along the front of that leg as well. And then without washing my brush, I'm just picking up some um, pure tinting white. And we'll just drag that through. Hasn't made a huge difference, but I'll just clean the brush and then come back with some titanium white. So a little bit of pure titanium white We'll just add a few flicks of that there. And while that's on the brush, I may as well just make use of that. Whoops, oh, that was, that was way too big a mark. Um, but actually, it's worked out reasonably well. Um, so we'll just add a few little flecks of that along the top of the back. I will be adding more of those later, but uh, I just wanted to see what that looks like. And I think that is going to work reasonably well. But let's get back to these uh, legs and feet. So now we've got uh, mostly tinting white with some of the crimson and a little touch of the blue. And we'll use that for some of the the darker colours on the feet. And some of those blue outlines I put in are, are naturally getting covered up in certain areas. But for example, there's a little bit of blue line work showing through on the top. And that's what I mentioned earlier. I quite like that effect. So 
I don't mind people being able to see a bit of drawing um, in the finished product. And furthermore, sometimes some of the final marks I make on a painting are actually drawing lines, you know, so I, th I think you can add to a painting with drawing at almost any stage if you want to. So I just want to take that same colour now and um, I'll mix it in with some of the titanium white just to get a paler version. And uh, we'll run some of that. It's not quite, again, it's not quite the right colour according to the reference, but um, it's just going to get us in the right ballpark. So we can fill in the silhouettes of um, these toes, uh, toes and claws. Don't know what's happening to my voice. <laughs> Getting a bit uh, strangled there. There we go. So that started to create some feet and legs you know in a more sort of 3d way and then while i've got that on the brush the usual thing i look elsewhere on the painting to see if i can use that same color so i can put a little touch of that lighter color there in here below the eye uh, perhaps a little bit there under the eye Um, so the head is coming together reasonably well at the moment. Obviously, there's some more detail required. But let's go back to the body now that those blue washes have dried. So next I've switched to a rather less ragged and frayed flat brush compared to the ones I've been using earlier. So this is a much newer brush. Um, it's about and a half an inch wide. And I've just taken some burnt umber, so I've just added that to my palette. And mixed in some of the crimson and some of the yellow and I'm hoping that's going to produce something of a coppery brown and it's not quite what I had in mind but it's pretty close so I'm just going to apply that over some of the shadow work so it's kind of a you know you know I'm kind of covering up some of what I've done before but I think it's necessary in this case some of it will remain so I just want to subdue some of those dark blues bring the yeah i'm going to leave some of the blue showing for sure but then there are some sort of key dark brown shapes that i want to include like that rounded end of a feather there um, and then under the tail here as well and then let me just uh spray the surface of the painting with a bit more water and let's see if i can get this sort of feathered effect I'm just dragging yeah that's working quite well actually so i'm just dragging the tips of the brush um, across the surface of the painting there Now that bit wasn't quite intentional, but again, I think it's going to work out OK. And then I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back in and refine the patterning further and also introduce some more vibrant blues and greens as well. So while that treatment on the body is uh, drying, then what I'll do is come in and 
work on the eye a little more. So I've mixed up an orange with cad yellow and the and the crimson. And I'm just filling in most of the eye with uh, this little round brush. And then I can add a little bit more yellow to that mixture. And just lighten up. Part of the eye. Then we'll come in with a mix of uh, the ultramarine blue and uh, burnt umber. And we've got the pupil in the eye much better than it was before. And next I've just mixed up a slightly more orangey red than the, the, uh, the red I used before. Uh, up near the head and I'm just going to kind of come back in and refine some of the colouring here. I think that's working a bit better. Add a few touches on top of the head. And then keep the surface of the painting wet there. Pick up some of the tinting white and add that to the same colour. We can put some highlights in. And then we can go a little bit lighter again with a bit more of the tinting white. I think that's improved the colouring in that area quite a bit. <laughs> 